Good day, everyone. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Daniel. Um, like Mr. Daniel said, uh, today we'll be starting with um, tidy data. Last week, we um, talked about data imports. And um, prior to that, uh, Mr. Daniels opened um, this section on Rango um, under this tidy uh, package. And then last week, we treated um, data imports. And today, like Mr. Daniel made mention, we'll be talking about um, tidy data, how to you know, get our, tida, our data set tidy, and then how to do some, how to get, yes, basically how to get our data set tidy and um, what and what we need to do to um, make our data very tidy. Um, once again, I welcome every one of us uh, to today's uh, meeting and um, I hope it's going to be a fruitful one like um, last week. Okay, so um, I'll kick off right away. Um, like I said, um, we'll talk about tidy data and um, I'll be using the um, Markdown uh, book um, from the R for Data Science um, within the um, R platform, my R studio as the case may be. Okay, so let's um, kick start without wasting time. Data tidy, um, what is it all about and um, why do we need to get uh, data tidy? Um, is there anything like um, untidy data? If the data is not tidy, then what's, um, what's the problem? What's the asset tidy? Okay, so, um, okay. Am I still audible, please? Yes, I can hear you clearly. All right, okay, so introduction now. Um, let's look at uh, these two quotes. Happy families are alike, are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Um, then the second one, tidy data sets are all alike, but um, every messy data set is messy in its own way. I think this actually you know, opens up um, what we want to talk about today. That means um, if a data set is tidy, um, that means there is a benchmark, there is um, um, a lay down rules that um, it should look like. So if a data set is tidy, um, then they look alike. So if you have um, five data sets and they are tidy, then definitely the, there is um, um, there is a benchmark um, similarity that um, um, that is across across those data sets. However, once the data is messy or it's untidy or families unhappy, then it's um, uh, every stroke for different folks. That means it's, um, it's kind of um, unique. You know, messy data is unique in its own way, and um, we'll see you know examples of this as we go on in the in this chapter okay so in this chapter we'll learn a consistent way to organize our data in r um and this is called um, tidy tidy data you now getting our data into this format requires you know, some upfront work we need to do some um, digging we need to do some reclassifying we need to do some um, mutating we need to do some um, recreation but that work you know it's going to pay off if we need to do some other statistical analysis if we need to do some other data representation visualization Later on. So once our data set is tidy, then and the tidy tools provided by the packages, you no, know, in the tidy verse, then we'd spend much less time, you no, know, monging data from one representation to another, and it also allows us to spend you no know, more time on, you know, things that are very much important, like you no know, analytic questions, you know, that we need to do. So rather than trying to work with the messy data to carry out analysis, once we've you know, gotten the data tidy, then um, we spend, you no, know, we can have more time to spend you know, in doing the analysis and every other thing we need to do with the data, with the data sets. Okay, so um, this chapter is going to give us a practical introduction to tidy data and then using the our company tools called TidyR package in, within the tidyverse. And then we can also learn more you know, from this published paper. I, try, I, I tried actually to lay my hands on it, but I don't know, I couldn't access the link I think there's an issue with it. I'm not sure. We can also check. Okay, so um, prerequisites. So what's what's at the background? What do we need to have? You no, know, in this in this chapter, I'll be using the tidy R. It's a package. You no, know, within the it's a core package within the tidy verse. So we need the library, as you know, we all know. We need library tidy verse. So the first thing is for us to um, get this library you know, up and running. 
So we are ready now to you know, call in a library. Um, so we use this function library and then the package itself, which is in this case is tidyverse. So run this and then we have the library up and running. Then we can use um, functions within tidyverse to do you know, things that um, we need to do. Okay, so let's go into the tidyverse you know, as the case is now. Okay, so tidy data. No, we, we can represent same underlining data in um, multiple ways. The example below is going to give us um, four different ways through which you know, data you know, can be represented, although there are more than one way. But like I said, there is just one way that, it, that the data is tidy. That's um, just one way that you can get. There is just one way. OK, thank you. There is just one way that you can get um, a data set tidy. So each data set shows the same values of four variables. In this case now, we have um, country, we have year, we have population, and we have cases. But um, each data set organizes values in a different way. So let's look at this um, table one, table two, table three, and then we have table four A and table four B. So let's see um, what these tables, um, how they look. And then we can do, okay, we'll not do a critic. We'll do the critic uh, in the next um, subsequent um, sections. Okay, so the first table is a six by four table and um, it's showing country column, then the second column is showing year, then the third column is showing cases, and the fourth column is showing population. Okay, so I'll just mention some things now so that when we get to those sections, we can pull things together. We see country as a character, we see year as integer, we see cases as integer, and then we see population as integer, you know, this, you know, this label underneath. So here we have country, we have year, we have cases, we have population for table one. Now for table, table two is a 12 by four table. Um, and then we have country, we have year. Now we have um, type and we have count. Now let's look at this. We have country, we have year, 1999, 2000. Then we have type as a character, cases, population, and then we have count. Now table three is a six by three table. And here we have country. We have year and then we have rate um, as a character, year as an integer, and country as you know, as a character. So a lot of things are going through our mind now. And then table table four A is a three by three table. We have a um, country. We have 1999. We so don't know what 1999 means. Whether it's population, whether it's you no. Know, we don't know whether uh, it's COVID cases. Okay, there was no COVID 1999, I think, at least not early 1999. And then we we have 2000. Oh, there was no COVID in 99, at least worldwide like this. Okay, so then we have 2000. So we actually don't know what this 1999 and 2000 represents. And then we have um, table 4B, three by three table, you know, this in this array too. Okay, so let's. Um, see what you no know, uh, we we can talk about from this table these tables are all representations of the same underlying data underlying data rather but they are not equally easy to use yes i think some of us have, would have been able to see that one data set the, the tidy data set will be much easier to work with inside the tidy tidyverse now there are three interrelated rules which make a data set tidy now. So if a data set is tidy, then it must you no, know, it must obey these rules one, two, three. Now the rule one is saying each variable must have its own column, each observation must have its own row, and then each value must have its own cell. Okay. Each variable must have its own column, country, cases, population. No age, gender, each variable like that must have its own column. And then each observation must have its, its own row. Um, Afghanistan, uh, male, uh, Afghanistan, no, um, like that. No, then each of then each value must have its own cell. That means that um, within a cell, you shouldn't have two values. So um, if I go back, just pardon me. 
if I come here now within this cell now within this cell we are having um, two values so this table three is not obeying no it's not obeying rule three so um so this should also be at the back of our mind especially as we work with um, large data sets it makes it very easy and then it helps the work and then it also helps presentation so um this is what um, those rules are saying variables must have its own column observations must have its own row and then value must have its own cell okay so this is when if um, a data set obeys these three rules then this is when you can say you know, the data is, uh, is tidy else it's messy or it's untidy now these three rules are interrelated because it's impossible to only satisfy two of the three no and um we, we we can't have um, two out of three it has to be 100 percent relationship that relationship you no know, this the existence of you no know, this tidy data set you know leads to an even simpler set of practical instructions one put each data set in a table put each variable in a column in this example that means in the previous example only table one is tidy and i think yes only table one is tidy so I mean, that means only this table that is tidy you no know? country um each um, variable is in column each um, observation is in its own row and then each value is in its own cell so this every other one you know uh, is not fulfilling that um, every other one is not fulfilling that um, rule or that basic tenet so um, it's only table this table one that is you no know, that is tidy you know in that in, in that regard okay so um why do we want you know, our you know, data set to be tidy there are two main advantages you no know. there's a general advantage to picking one consistent way of storing our data that means um, if you have a consistent data structure it's easier to learn the tools that work with it because they have an underlying uniformity if our data set is not tidy then um we might not be able to use some basic tools because um yeah but because they won't obey you no know, basic um uh, underlying rules also there's a specific advantage to placing variables in columns because this allows our vectorized nature to shine you no know, as um, we've learned in sections under mutate and under summarize most built-in r functions work with you know, vectors of values and that makes you no know, transforming data tidy data feel particularly natural this i mean would see you know subsequently now the d player and the ggplot2 are you no know, other packages within the tidyverse and they are designed you no know, they, they are designed to work you know well with a tidy data you now here are a couple of small examples showing how you know we might work with um table one now um i would just want, want us to look at um, the uh, the first one it says compute um rate per 1000 and um, if you remember when we learned about mutate i can't remember what to cost the class now whether it's um um i can't remember now but we know what mutate does um it creates a new column and then adds the column i think it adds the, the column to the table so we here we have table one and then it's piped and then we have mutate we don't have rates in table one but we have cases and then we have population. So we have cases divided by population multi multiplied by um, a thousand. So, uh, and there here computes cases per year. So this is saying uh, table one counts, you no, know, by year, the number of cases. So um, if I do, this is not going to show, this is going to show, so, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me close this. Let's run it per line. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is the first one. 
So we have a um, country, we have year, we have cases, we have population, and we have rates. The rates, this column was not there before. So uh, the table one is tidy, and it's also easier for us to call you know, um, functions and columns you know, easily. So mutate, this is what mutate does. You no, know, it can do simple expression, and then also it will now create the new column inside you know, the, the table itself. And then here we have um, count. All what this is saying is that you count you know, the number of um, cases per year. So number of cases per year. Then we have year 1999, year 2000. So these are the number of cases you know, within you know, the table one. And then now we can visualize using ggplot. We still um, remember you know, our ggplot. You know, Table one, the aesthetics, year, and cases. Then we have the geom line. That means we are going to have a line which is grouped across countries. And then we have the color as gray. Then we have geo points, which is also grouped across country. And then the shape is country. That means we are going to have a legend you no know, showing country. And then we have the scale you know, as continuous, which is going to break between 1999 and then and 2000, so we've run this now. Okay. Okay, so we have this, we've done this you now, when we started, at least we have an idea of what you know, this should do. So we have cases and year, then we have um, 1999, we have 2000, and then we have this you know, GG plot. Okay, so um, let's move on. Now we have exercises. Um, perhaps I would um, try and, um, call name so that it's a bit interactive. Okay, so the first one says, using prose, describe how the variables and um, observations are organized in each of the sample table. Okay, so using prose, let's just um, copy this. Okay, so we can go back. Okay, so this saying, Okay, let me copy it here. Okay, so using pros, describe how the variables and observations are organized in each of the sample table. So I will just call our names as it is appearing here. So I'll start with Mr. Daniel. Um, using pros, describe how the variables and observations are organized in table one. All right, so let me just see. Hmm. Uh, so I should describe how the variables and observations are organized in each Organized, yeah. Yeah, 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 in this one that I'm showing, yes. Um, so I can see countries on the rows. Uh, so okay. Afghanistan, Brazil, China. Okay. Um, uh, I can also see, yeah. Okay. Um, so 1999, 2000. I mean, it's a six okay. by four. So I guess this covers the entire data set. Yeah. So 1999, 6000. Um, hmm. so cases are like numerical variables. Um, okay. so cases is probably like a count of something. Okay. In population is probably showing the number of individuals that are in Afghanistan in 1999. So if I take the first row, number of individuals that are in or population of something that okay. was, I think, it, I think it's TB anyway. I think it's tuberculosis yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I think that's kind of what I can see. So okay. countries here on the rows, okay. then uh, a numerical variable on the colons, and that covers okay. cases and population. Okay, so can we say this table is tidy? Um, hmm. I mean, yes, it does. It, it looks like, I mean, if you follow the, the three um, criteria that you mentioned. Okay. So each, there's, there's a variable. Uh, each variable has its own colon, right? Okay. Yeah. There are values uh, in the fields themselves, and each row has its own observation. So I, I think, okay. yes, it looks okay. tidy to me. Yeah. yeah, it is. Actually, that's mm -hmm. okay. So um, mm -hmm. the next person, um, yes, the next person is um, for Lasha Day. Okay, so this is um, table two. So looking at table two, what can you say about this table two? Oh, 
Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Following these rules that we have here, three rules. I think table two is not tidy. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, we can say that it is not tidy, particularly because um, the type is mixed. We have cases and we have yes. population. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Okay, so um, for table three, um, Maria Elena, pardon me if I haven't pronounced it very well. No, pardon no, it, it was fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, well, this one now. I mean, we can see country here and here, but. Uh, well, the rate one is the problematic one, I think, here, because we have like two values. Well, we have, we should, according to the rules, have um, one value per, per cell. So, oh, yeah. fantastic. Thank you very much. So, yes, so um, that's, that's, that's just it. Thank you. I think, I've, um, I think that's all. Do we have, um, okay, why is table two not tidy again? Okay, table two is not tidy because um, we have uh, on that type, we have a mixture, we have cases, we have population, and going by um, that rule, um, observations, yes, um, cases should uh, be a column, population should be a column, which is what is um, obtainable in this table, cases and population. So that's why table two I is see, not- I see, I see, I see, makes sense. Yeah, tidy. Sense. Thanks. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's for exercise one. Now for exercise two, if we have to do all these exercises, I think this will stop. But I think it's um, I think these exercises are good. Um, if we can't finish it, we have to go into the solutions and then we have to continue. But maybe we should just look at exercise two. I have the solutions here anyway, so um, I've extracted them from the solution to, uh, manual. So compute the rate for table two. Compute the rate for table four A and four B. Now to compute rate. Um, extract the number of TB cases per country per year. Extract the matching population per country per year. Divide cases by population and multiply by 10,000. Then stop back in the appropriate place. Okay. So which representation is easiest to work with? Which is the hardest and then why? Now, um, table one was computed for us. So for table two, it's a bit um, problematic, but um, we'll look at it and then maybe that's the only one we'll look at and then we'll um, go on. Now, um, we will have to perform four operations. We, we can see for table one, because table one is tidy already, we only performed just one operation because this is what um, is expected. Something like this, yes, is what is expected. But because... Um, Table two is not tidy, then we have to perform four operations and they are quite you know, lengthy. Okay, so first create separate um, tables for cases. Okay, maybe what we can do is um, maybe first of all see what um, table two looks like. Okay. Uh, table two. Let's see what table two looks like. Uh, Okay, my right table two. Okay, there is no space. Okay, so let's see what table two looks like. Perfect. Okay, so this is a 12 by 4 table. And now they want us to have um, the exercise is saying we should um, compute rate. You know, that's the only thing they want us to do to compute rate. And um, to compute rate, you need to extract the number of TB cases per country per year. We have country, TB cases, this is cases now. You see where the problem is now? Per country, per year, and then match population per country per year, divide cases by population and multiply by 10,000, and then stop back you know, as rate. So because um, the table itself is not um, tidy, we need to first of all get it tidy before we can carry out you know, this operation. Okay, so the first thing is, um, we create to create a function t two cases filter that means um, we want to extract you no know, when we filter that means we want to extract something out you no know, from something 
So filter from table two cases, you know, this is what um, this is saying. Filter from table two, you no know, type, under type, filter cases out and then mutate, then rename cases as counts, arrange, you know, country and year. So um, if I do this, uh, I, okay, so this, what this is going to do, what, what, what this is doing is um, it's, uh, it's going to extract um, all cases on that type, it's going to rename it as count, and then it's still going to arrange you know, country and year. So we have country year, and then we have we are also going to know now you no know, we are going to have country here but um we need to mutate to bring it in so um the next one is to solve for population so filter um table two type population rename population you no know, as count and then arrange country year so um this is performed now the next step is um, then create a new data frame with population cases columns and calculate the cases per capita in a new column. Okay, so um, so this goes like this. This is just um, the name of a function. Then from table, this is saying I want to create you know, a table or a table as the case may be. Then we want to have year. Year now is T2 cases. Uh, yeah, I think um, if I do this, let's see. T2 underscore cases. Let's see this. I think this should give us. Yeah. So I this is T2. So we have um filter from table two type bring out cases and then rename cases you no know, as count that means that um, count the number of cases you no know, rename oh sorry rename sorry rename cases as count that means replace you no know, count with cases and then arrange country you no know, year so we have country year then we have you no know, the type which is now you no know, only using only cases because we filtered out population and then um renaming you know, the cases as you no know, renaming the count as um cases okay now we have um now let's see what this is doing t2 underscore population uh, something similar okay okay so we have the same thing it's just doing um you know we have um on that type, we have both cases and population. So this also is extracting population alone, and then it's counting the total number of population. So uh, yes, so it's counting the total number of population for each country for each year. Okay, so uh, yes, so um, so that's what you no, know, that is doing. Now, so we have um, T two, um, we have T two cases, we have T two population. Um, so here now. We are creating um, T2 cases per capita. Um, so we want to create a table showing year, showing country, showing cases, and then showing population. So we have this. Um, we have um, table, year is T2 cases with year. T2, okay, let me just um, run this so that um, we have an idea of what this is doing. Okay. Um, pipe in. Okay. T two underscore cases per capita. This should do. Okay. So, um, yeah, is equals to T two underscore cases um that, okay what this is just saying is that um inside t2 cases we have year so call year t2 um 
the dollar sign is um, saying that um, under the table called T2 underscore cases, there is year. So make this um, T2 underscore cases dollar sign year, make it year. Then for country from T2 underscore cases, you no, know, extract country. So it's extracting country from you no know, that function. I think if the dollar sign um, um, is, um, you can use the dollar sign. The dollar sign is picking country because in T2 cases, there is country. So um, this is like um, from T2 cases, country, you know, rename it country. From T2 cases, cases, rename it cases, and then, um, or call it cases because it's still table. Call it cases then. From T2 population, population, call it population. So we have a new table called um, T2 um, underscore cases underscore per capita. Um, although we've not done the per capita. So this is um, the table, the six by four table. And um, that's what um, that um, expression is um, is doing. Any questions so far? Sorry. Any questions so far? Uh, okay, so I can go on. So then we have um, this piping. Okay, so we have this piping. And then Mutit is saying, okay, carry out this expression and then create a new column. Now, from here now, we don't have, we don't have um, cases per capita. Now, this is a formula to calculate cases per capita. Divide total number of cases by total number of population, which is now very simple because we have um, a column for each of those. So divide cases for each country for each year by, you know, population for each country for each year, multiply that with um, 10,000, okay? So we can, if, if we run this, okay, if we run, okay, um, let's, if we run this, T2 underscore cases per capita. So if you run this, you should have a new column called, um, cases per capita, yeah. So this is what mutate is doing, is carrying out the expression and then is um, bringing in a fresh column called um, cases per capita, okay? So, um, but select, it's saying select only country, year, and cases per capita. So we don't want to see cases, we don't see population. So that's what um, this last, um, that's what this last um, expression, or this, yeah, this last expression is just going to give us. So if you run this now, okay. So um, it's not going to show because I'm not calling, you know. So if I do T2 underscore this, so if we run this is, um, okay. So yeah, so he's only selecting country, year and cases per capita. Okay, so um, it's, it's um, not um, showing other columns. So we have um, a fresh table from the previous table two that's not, that was not tidy, but now uh, it's getting you know, tidier as um, the case may be. Now to store this new variable in the appropriate location, we need to add new rows to table two, okay? Because this is not um, table two. This is just a table that is helping us you know, rearrange, you know, um, uh, this is a table that we created out of table two, but we still have to bring in all this back into table two. So T2 underscore case underscore this. Now this now pipe mutate type is equals to cases per capita now. So we have case per capita. Now we want to count. We want to count this. We want to count, you no. Know, uh, want to turn, no, no, want to change, sorry. We want to change this to count. Yes, we want to change this to count. So this is it here. So yes, so this is uh, then, okay. Then we are binding the rows together. So bind rows just means um, bring the rows together. We are binding the rows together. Table two, binding it with um, T2 underscore, um, cases per capita, that means you are binding the table two with um, T2 underscore cases per capita table. And then we are rearranging it, you know, 
country year type count. Now we've renamed um, this, you no, know, uh, cases, sorry, we've renamed cases per capita as count. So we run this now. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, I've done something. I think I've done, no, not here. Bind. Let me check where the error is. Sorry, some minutes. Come, which is counts. I think, shouldn't this be in this? Mutate type is equals to this. Is it this? No, column case of capital does not exist. You name counts. Okay, mutate. Okay, it's not existing. Count cases per cup. I think it, it might be from the previous block of code. So just go to the code before the table itself. I think oh, there was oh okay. The block of code that was supposed to run there first. Like the select country year cases per cup. I'm not sure if you okay. that yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully okay. that works. And I think this might this might work. All right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um so we have um table two now. Country, we have year, we have type, but uh, we still have type showing cases, cases per cap population and then we have count so um i still need to yeah perform one last note that after adding cases per cap per rows the type of count is coerced you know, to numeric because um cases per cap is not um an integer so um yes so there are still some other things you can still do here on that you no know, we can still um show cases we can still show cases per capita and then we can show population. So we can still bring those out as fresh column and then you know, still get it you know, in shape. But um, this is just uh, what um, the exercise um, is asking us to do. Now, um, for table four, it's, um, it's going to be longer. And um, yeah, because for table four, we have 1999 and 2000. And one funny thing about table four is um, 1999 and 2000 is not year. It's actually not showing as year. It's um, as a column. So it's it's like a variable. It's, yeah, it's like a variable. That's why it's um, in um, double um, parentheses and it's also in um, inverted quotes. Okay. So because if you use 1999 alone, it's it's not going to run. If you use 1999 alone, it's not it's not going to run. Okay. I think I've removed something there. Okay. So if you use 1999 alone, it's not, um, yeah, it's not going to work. So here it's uh, 1999 is not showing as, um, it's not reading 1999 as year. So it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, so it's reading it as um, um, a variable, but because it is in figures, that's why it has to be in um, uh, this um, double bracket and um, inverted. Um, um, Quotes and then we perform the same operation 1999 divided by um, 1999, you know, multiplied by 10,000, 2000 divided by 2000. You know. it's, um, it's a very funny table. And then, you know, the whole process of what we've done, you know, is going to be repeated. So let's see. Now that table is particularly easy to work with. Since table two has separate, school, uh, separate rules for cases and population we needed to generate a table with columns for cases and population where we could calculate cases per capita. Table 4A and 4B split the cases and population variables into different tables, which made it easy to divide cases by population. However, we had to repeat this calculation for each row. The ideal format of a data frame to answer this question is one with columns country, columns year, columns cases, and columns population then problem could be answered with a single mutate call, which you know, was done um, for table one. Okay, so um, three is saying, um, recreate the plot showing changes in cases over time 
using table two instead of table one, what do you need to do first before creating the plot um, with change in cases over time? We need to filter table two to only include rows representing cases of table uh, of TB rather. Um, so um, this is um, table two filter no type is equals to cases. Um, let's see how table two looks like now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's just see how table two looks like. So that, um, okay. So we want to create a plot of, um, I think cases by country, like we had in that GG plot. So, um, from the same table two, filter this type cases alone. Okay. So, um, the GG plot aesthetics year no count year count okay gym line aes group is equals to country color no the gray gym point aes is equals to color no country and then continuous no this and then the y label is because it's going to be what okay so it's going to be um yeah, X is going to be year, Y is going to be is, is going to be cases. So if we run this, okay, so we are going to have something like this. So we have cases, and then we have year. Um, from our ggplot um uh, knowledge, we know um how AES uh, behaves uh, the aesthetics. It takes um, a mapping function. But in this case now, since um, we are not using um, the normal X, Y, so we are just using um, year, and then we are grouping by country, which you know, um, the jump line and jump points could carry you know, the group. And then since the group is a um, character now, yes, so it's it's going to give us um, um, far, yeah, character, yes, it's going to give us um, a legend like this. And then the break 1999 2000, and then the Y label is um cases. So, um, so yes, so this um becomes pretty um straightforward to do. Okay, so um, the next um section has to do with um pivoting, and um, the principle of tidy data, tidy data seems so obvious that you might wonder. If you will encounter a data set that isn't tidy, but um, we know that's not the case. Most data sets that we have now are not tidy, as especially not to this standard. We, we still need to do some cleaning and um, um, some other things. And the um, reasons for this is that um, most people, yeah, we aren't familiar with um, tidy data. And um, it's also hard to derive them because it also takes a lot of time you know, getting the data up to shape. And also data is often organized, you know, um, data is often organized to facilitate some other, often other, some use other than analysis. So for example, data is often organized to make entry as easy as possible. So when we transfer this data to make further, you know, statistical analysis or further representations, we need to get them tidy, especially in this you know, kind of form. So this means for most real analysis, we need to do some tidying. So the first step is to figure out what variable and what the variables are and what the observations are. Then sometimes this is easy, but sometimes it is not. Sometimes you have to consult now. And um, the second step you know, is to resolve one or two common problems, which is one, one variable might spread across multiple columns. Um, there's an example at the end of, it, of this um, um, tidy data, which is um, a WHO data set, which actually you know, makes clear some of these things. Okay, so two, one observation might be scattered across you know, multiple rows. So we can picture some of these things and you know, have a mental image of um, what you know, this is actually saying. So typically, a data set will only suffer from one of these problems, but sometimes you could have you no know, data set you know, suffering from both, where we have um, 1999 as year, we also have 1999 another column, you no, know, just you no, know, a very, very untidy data. And um, we need to rearrange, we need to get it tidy. And then um, to fix these problems, um, we need the two most important functions in tidy R, which is um, 
pivot longer and then pivot wider. So um, we've talked about this, uh, I think when, um, is it Mr. Emmanuel or Samuel now? Can't remember his name. I can't pick the name now. When he was taking us, no, sometimes last year, I think he talked about pivot longer or pivot wider, but we've, we've talked about it you now in this um, group six, pivot longer and pivot wider. As the name is, one makes it wider while the other makes it longer. So depending on what we need, and depending on, yes, depending on what we need to do, then we can use either of the two. The two don't um, give the same output. Yeah. So a common problem for longer, a common problem is a data set where some of the columns are not names or variables, but values of a variable. Suppose you no, know, we have a data in this format for A. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the columns are not names or variables, but they are values. You no. Know? In this case now, 1999, 2000. But in the in this sense, they are actually variables, but they are not names, but they are values in quotes. So um, what, what can we do? So in this sense, we have to do um, a pivot longer. So, and um, you want to create the following visualization. Sorry. Okay. I think I've gone for, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Put down. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And you want to create the following visualization where each line represents you know, a country. And then, yeah, is on the X axis. Cases are on the Y axis. Here, we don't even have cases. And um, you automatically get the legend that indicates which line represents the country. But we have a problem here. We don't even have cases. We only have country, um, we don't have year. So um, um, we, we don't even know um, what we can do. So um, we can do this. Uh, table four, um, pivot longer, columns, concatenate, 1999, 2000, names to year, values to cases. So um, if we do this, let's see what this is doing. Table for A. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's run this. Okay. Then let's run this. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's because of this. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. So this should be here. Okay. So let's run this. Table for a unexpected. Why is it unexpected? Okay, sorry, excuse, okay, coming, okay, this is running, okay, Okay. okay. Table four A. This should show. Oh, it's not show. Okay, it's not show. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's still not. It's not showing dates pass yet. Yeah. No. Oh, 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 no. It's not showing. I don't know what the problem is here, but it should show. Okay, let's um 
I don't figure that out. Okay. Okay, let's run this. Let's run this and then let's, uh, okay. So we have um, the GG plot, but I, I would have loved that we see. Okay, let's do it this way. After the mutates, let's have um, table four A, table four A. So that we see what um, it's been done here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is um. This is table four, the old table four. Then pivot longer. This is what is happening. So we have country. Now we have year. That means um, we have year ninety nine two thousand. So we have ninety nine two thousand, ninety nine two thousand, ninety nine two thousand. Now we now have this as the cases. So we have um, the cases in each. Um, values in the um, observations you no know, as values in each um, in each of its own uh, yes as yes uh, in each cell so we have observation observations in each cell so this is um we've made this longer by you know by run by doing this uh, pivot longer columns 99 2000 names to year which is what we have here names to year values you no know, values you no know, to cases and then mutate year pass you no know, integer that means make year integer and then um table four is so it is now here that we can do um uh, ggplot aesthetics x equals to year y is equals to cases and then it becomes very easy group by year color shape you no know, country um color country and then we can have um something you no know, of this um nature um as um regards um, the gg plot um as regards um, the gg plot that follows okay so if you run this now uh -huh. so if we run this now it's possible initially it wasn't possible because you don't even have year Yes. Okay. We have here. We don't have cases. Um, something like that. So, um, so pivot longer made um, the table four longer with um, new column uh, using the mutate and then um, yeah. So it's more straightforward to do the starting with the data from where country year cases are the columns and each row represent a record from a country for a particular year. Now, um, so. Yeah, so this was what you know, was done, you know, um, typically this was also done to you know to transform the table four. However, in the table four, the columns 99 and 2000 represent value of the year variable. The values in the 1999 and 2000 column represent values of the cases variable. And each row represents observations, not one. So the tidy, to tidy the data set like this, we need to pivot the offending columns into a new pair of variables. Now, to describe the operation, we need three parameters. The new, the set of columns whose names are values, not variables. In these examples, is in this example, those are the columns 1999 and 2000. The name of the variable to move the column names to year. The name of the variable to move the column values to cases. Together, those parameters generate the call to pivot longer. So, which is what uh, they are now explaining what you know, was um, what was done you know, here. So, this is uh, what you know, they've done you know, um, using pivot longer. Now, the columns to pivot are specified you know, with um, D player select style notation in the calls argument. Here, there are only two columns, so we list them individually. Note that 1999 and 2000 are non syntactic names because they don't start with a letter. So we have to surround them you know, in back ticks, you know, which is what um, I was trying to say you know, the other time. So um, they were surrounded with back ticks, or what I was calling inverted um, comma or something. So back ticks. And then to refresh our memory uh, of the other ways to select, I think um, there are other ways whereby we can select um, 
um, this. So we can see the section on select, you no? Know? Yeah, year and cases do not exist in table four. So we put their names in quotes, in names too, and then values to arguments respectively so that um, they will be created. Now in the final result, the pivoted columns are dropped and we get the new year cases columns. Otherwise, the relationship between the original variables are preserved. Visually, this is shown. Okay, this is just the, the visual. Um, yes, this was also done visually. So um, this is the old table for A. We have country, we have 1999, we have 2000. Now we want to make it longer. So here we have year, which is going to represent 1999 and 2000, not the um, values underneath them. So now the values underneath them is now going to become cases. And um, this is just carried out using the pivot longer and then um, some basic um, transformation columns. This is the new columns concatenates them. Their names to, because you don't have here, that's why it's in um, back ticks. So it's going to give them new name. So um, I think uh, if we don't do this, let me see. If we don't do this, it's going to um, leave um, the old um, the old um, columns. So, but because that's not going to be sensible, so that's why you know, we have to you know, rename them as um, uh, names to the first uh, names you know, to this, and then values of these um, um, columns you know, to cases. So, and um, that is. Um, that was done um, effortlessly, effortlessly. Okay, so there is still one issue though. Take a peek at the type of year variable. Now, if you look at year, year is in character, and the year shouldn't be in character. And um, it's um, what was transferred from um, this um, diagram. Um, 1999 and 2000 are um, yeah. The 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 package is seeing them as um, variables even though they, they, they are not with uh, letters, they, they do not start with letters. So you see them as variables. So it's going to see them as characters. And then, um, yeah, but in this case, you no, know, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be character, they should be um, integer. So we should pass an argument. So um, we should expect here to be numeric or specifically you know, to be an integer. However, it's showing up as a character. This is because the values in the year variable, you no, know, it comes from a column headings in 4A, like I've said. So we need to add a new step to our pipeline using the you know, mutate you know, to pass this variable as an integer. So we have to use the argument in the read R, you know, pass integer, and then we are going to put you know, in the bracket or in the parenthesis what we are passing. So um, table four, we know this pivot longer columns, 1999, 2000, names to year, values to cases. Now this is stopping this function here. This is stopping the pivot um, longer function and then mutate into table four. Yeah, but pass it as what? As an integer, not a character. So if you run this, then we are going to have year as integer, cases as integer, then country as character. And then we have a table um, six by three. Okay, so once we have our data in this longer format, we can create the visualization that motivated this tidying exercise as follows. So we can do the um, GG plot and then plot year cases, uh, plot, um, yeah, we can even plot, yeah, plot year by cases and then label by country. Um, yes. Um, so uh, pivot longer makes it, um, this is not okay. So, but we can plot, yeah, we've seen the um, ggplot um, gg plot that was done. X is equals to year, Y is equals to cases, and then we group by country, and, um, and then we do our scale, zoom line, zoom point, and then we do our scale, and then we can plot. So, pivot longer makes data sets longer as the name is by increasing number of rows and decreasing number of columns. I don't believe it makes sense to describe data sets as being in long form. Length relative term, yes. And you can see only the data set A is longer than data set B. We can use pivot longer to tidy the before we blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I guess we are stopping now. Yes. Okay, we have over time though. Maybe we could conclude with pivot wider next week. Okay, okay. So um, yeah, so we'll wrap up everything next week. Uh, thank you very much. I hope 
we've been able to gain one or two things from um, the um, class today. Um, if we need this um, markdown for tidy data, it has the solutions to these exercises, then I can always make it available upon request. Okay, thank you and do have um, uh, a wonderful evening or as the case may be morning or afternoon. Thank you very much.